Do you think there's an afterlife? I do, yes. Are you afraid of death? I'm not, no. Everybody is. <laughs> don't you have thoughts of dying and being buried under the ground? Isn't there something in you that says, I don't like this, I don't want to be involved? I mean, I guess it is a bit scary when you think about how it happens, but ultimately everybody kind of goes through it, so it's just a part of life that you have to accept, I guess. Why? Um, I think if you don't, it'll just make the life that you're living in the present a lot harder to deal with. So I like to think of it as just a step in the process. Do you believe in God? I don't know. You Buddhist? Yes. I would, I kind of, I don't know. Well, Buddhism is kind of atheistic. Do you know what the default position is if you're an atheist? That means you believe the scientific impossibility that nothing created everything, which is insane. That nothing is not that not there was nothing in the beginning. It was this nothing was the creative force that made everything. That is utterly scientifically impossible. Mm -hmm. So you're still an atheist? <laughs> I mean, I think that does give me something more to think about. But okay, let me give you something else to think about. Behind me, there's a building. Can you see it? I can. Yes. Is there any proof there was a builder? No. What about the building? <laughs> Buildings um, don't build themselves. Yeah, I guess you just have to trust that there was something there before. Well, you don't have to trust. You can know there was a builder because buildings don't build themselves. The building is absolute proof there was a builder. The painting is absolute proof there was a painter. And creation is absolute proof there's a creator. Flowers and birds and trees, the seasons, the sun, the moon, the stars, the fruits, male and female, and all the species. The miracle of the human eye, childbirth. All these things show us the genius of God's creative hand because Man, with all his genius, can't make a grain of sand from nothing. We don't know where to start. Is this making sense? Yeah, it is. So now do you believe in God? Um, I guess so, yeah. I think it, yeah, it's really important to know. We're halfway there. Do you think God could be the answer to death? If he made us, we should find out why we die. Why didn't he make us without disease, pain, suffering, and death? Is he a sadist? Or is there something wrong? Do you ever read the Bible? I haven't, no. Cassidy, let me, let me see if I can put salt on your tongue. That is a desire to open the Bible. It's the world's biggest selling book of all time. The Old Testament, God promised to destroy death, and the New Testament tells us how he did it. Did you know that? I didn't know. Do you know what the Bible says death actually is? Mm -mm. It says it's wages. Is that strange? That is really strange. <laughs> let me see if I can unstrange it for you. It says the wages of sin is death. In other words, God is paying you in death for your sins. Like a judge looks at a criminal who thinks lightly of killing three women. He says, oh, they were prostitutes, judge. They were just the scum of society. You know, I'm doing society a favor. And the judge says, I'm going to show you how serious this is. I'm giving you the death sentence. This is your wages. This is what you've earned. This is what's due to you. This is what we're paying you. The Bible says sin is so serious to a holy God. We don't think it's serious. Lying and stealing and fornicating and blaspheming, etc. Your death is evidence that God is serious about sin. Now here's a big question for you. Do you think God is justified in giving you the death sentence? Are you that evil that he's justified in doing that? So do you think you're a good person? That's what I'm trying to ask you in a roundabout way. Are you morally a good person? I would say so, yes, but there's always room for a mistake, so I wouldn't say I'm the perfect person. Okay, let's see how imperfect you are. Let's see if you're human. I'm going to give you the Ten Commandments as a moral measuring rod. Can you be honest with me? Yes. How many lies have you told in your life? A lot. Too much to <laughs> So what do you call someone who lies? A liar. So what are you? A liar. Do you still think you're a good person? I wouldn't say so, no. You ever stolen something in your whole life, even if it's small? From my brother, maybe. <laughs> you stole from your own brother? <laughs> yeah. So what do you call someone who steals? A thief. So what are you? A thief. Oh, you're not? You're a lying thief. <laughs> have you ever used God's name in vain? I have, yes. Love your mum? Yes. Would you ever use her name as a cuss word? Hit your thumb with a hammer? Want to say SH? Would you put her name in its place to express disgust? Would you ever do that? I wouldn't, no. Why not? Um, I don't know, because I think I respect her a lot. I would never put her in that position. But you don't respect the God that gave you a mum, that gave you life and eyesight and hearing and a brain and blood and veins and a heart and the blueness of the sky and the warmth of the sun and flowers and birds and trees. He lavished his kindness upon you and you took his holy name and used it in place of the S word. Very serious, Cassidy, called blasphemy mm -hmm. and punishable by death in the Old Testament. One to go, and again, I appreciate your honesty and your patience with me. 
No this is this is a little painful, but it's worth it in the long run. We're going to come out of the tunnel in a minute, so I appreciate your patience. But personal, Jesus said, if you look with lust, sexual desire, you commit adultery in the heart. Have you ever done that? I guess so, yeah. Well, here is the judgment. I'm not judging you, but this is what you've said. You've told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterer at heart, mm -hmm. so you've earned your wages. So on Judgment Day, when God judges you by the Ten Commandments, do you think you'll be innocent or guilty? Guilty. Heaven or hell? Hell. <laughs> now, does that concern you? Yeah, a bit. Oh, it concerns me a lot. I've just met you, but I care about you. And the thought of you, a human being, ending up damned by God, justly, that horrifies me. Now, here's the big question. What did God do for guilty sinners so they wouldn't have to go to hell? Remember the Old Testament? He promised to destroy death. Mm -hmm. New Testament tells us how he did it. Do you know what God did so he wouldn't have to go to hell? No, I don't. Have you heard of Jesus dying on the cross? I do, yeah. yeah. If you can get a grip of this just over the next two minutes, it will change your life for eternity if you can get a grip of it. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine in full. If you're in court and you've got speeding fines and someone pays them, a judge can legally let you go. Even though you're guilty, you can say you're out of here. Mm -hmm. The debt's been paid. You can go. And God can legally dismiss your case, forgive all your sins in an instant, and take the death sentence off you, all because of Jesus' death and resurrection. And all you have to do, it's so simple, a child can understand it, that shows the kindness of God. All you have to do is repent of your sins, it means to turn from them. You can't play the hypocrite and say you're a Christian, but you fornicate and lie and steal and lust, etc. But to turn from all sin and be sincere, and then trust in Jesus like you trust a parachute. At the moment, you're like a man on the edge of a plane 10,000 feet up without a parachute, and this is his plan. He's going to flap his arms and try and save himself. You and I would say to that man, don't do that, just trust that parachute. And so don't, don't think you're going to save yourself on Judgment Day by saying I'm a good person, because it's not going to work. You can't save yourself. Just simply transfer your trust from yourself to the Savior. Trust in Jesus. It's as simple as that. And you've got a promise from the God who cannot lie. And the Bible says God is without sin. It's impossible for him to lie. That he'll grant you everlasting life as a free gift the moment you repent and trust in the Savior. Is this making sense to you? It is, yeah. It's really beautiful. You're going to think about what we talked about? I definitely am, yeah. When are you going to repent and trust in Christ? I think that sounds like it should be an everyday thing, every second of your life. Starting from today? Starting from today. Can I pray with you? Yeah, sure. Father, I pray for Cassidy. I thank you for her open heart today. I thank you for an answered prayer on my part for preparing her heart. And I pray you'll grant her understanding and may she see your love in that cross that you loved her so much. You provided a way for her to be forgiven. And may she find a place of genuine sorrow for her sin and true repentance and faith in Jesus this day and pass from death to life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you know what a Gospel of John is? I don't know. It's the, it's the fourth book of the New Testament, and I'm going to give you a copy, okay? It's very unusual. You're going to like it. And it's God's love letter to you. Do you think you'll read it? I definitely will, yeah. It looks really interesting. I think it's something you need to learn. Thank you so much for listening to Dan. A lot of people will be praying for you, and I so appreciate the fact that you're listening and you've taken this seriously. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Right. Make sure you check out the Living Waters podcast and this it's everything I've ever learned in 50 years of apologetics and evangelism. Get your copy of the Evidence Study Bible and check out the starter kit while you're there at livingwaters.com. If you haven't seen our video, Try Denying God's Existence, after watching this, you're going to love it. You can watch it now by clicking up to your left.